Today I wanted to revisit the releases from Hello Project over 2020 and kind of rank them so that I could see which one ended up being my favourite. A little bit of history about me and Hello Project. I have followed Hello Project since before 2010. I first found them by getting into Bono. From there I discovered Cute, Berry's Corbo and then Morning Musume and the rest of them. The beginning of last year I was actually lucky enough to see a Hello Project concert while I was in Japan, which was the first concert I've seen of Hello Project as a collective. In terms of releases in 2020, because of obvious issues, there were less releases last year than usual. We had two releases from Morning Musume 2.0. The first was a triple A side single, Kokoro and Karada, Love Pedia, Ningen Kanke, No Way Way. I actually got to see Kokoro and Karada live. This actually is amazing because the dance is so intricate. All the girls are completely in sync. It just has this really spacey feel. At the beginning, I didn't really like it. It's not got as much of a melody. It's strangely catchy, but then Ningen Kanke, No Way Way, and Love Pedia. The concept was that it was two songs with the same melody but different arrangements. I think the concept was quite interesting, but it ended up being a little bit boring in terms of execution. The actual songs themselves are not all that interesting. I'm kind of bored of both of them. I think it would have been more interesting for them to do something along the lines of the Betty Q Cho Happiness crossover song, where they had two songs that then could be mashed together to be a new song. I also really hate that bit in the bridge from Ningen Kange No Wei Wei. Reminds me of some kind of kids song and I hate it and I just wish it wasn't there. I'm not a fan of this release at all, even though Kokoro and Karada is a great song. I think the other two kind of drag it down. And then the second release was just a double A side. Jinjo Evidence, You Saritai Dake na no ni. Both of these are absolute bangers. Even though I didn't like Jinjo Evidence on first listen, it's really grown on me. It's got a similar spacey, airy, vibe to it as Kokoro and Karada and then Kyu Saretai Dake na no ni is much more jazzy feeling and moody and kind of in the same vein or the, the same kind of mood as Jama Shinai de Here We Go. For some reason I just really like that vibe. I really like the syncopation parts in the dance and the intro with the... Like how cool is that? Both of these would be amazing to watch live as well. Moving on we have Anjurumu or Anger Me and they released Kagiri Aru Moment and Mira Mira. To start with, I actually preferred Kagiri Aru Moment, but it's kind of for Gettable in a strange way. On the other hand, Mira Mira, I absolutely hated on my first listen, but it's grown on me so much and I'm constantly catching myself humming it or like singing little bits of it. It's like really catchy actually. But then the best release for Anger Me was Shaka Shaka To Love, which was their collaboration song with some kind of toothbrush company. That video is so catchy, it's so fun, the song is amazing, and who can resist Shaka Shaka? To love. It's so good. I love this song. It's amazing. I tried to take part in the campaign that they were running to win toothbrushes because like when, when, why, I don't know, toothbrushes and idols, like why not? I'll take it. I think because I really loved Funaki Musubu, I was disappointed to having her push the graduation date because of all the stuff happening in Japan. And the same with Miyamoto Kari. I was really hoping that they'd end up being able to release another single. I guess Shaka Shaka to Love is the best way of still having had another song with her in it, even if it wasn't a single. Next, I guess, is Juice Juice. And Juice Juice was like killing it. And I think similarly, with Funaki because Kanin-chan had announced her graduation and because the plan was for this to be the last single with Kanin-chan in it. They didn't want to put out another single towards the end of the year because that was supposed to be her last single and all the packaging and branding I believe had mentioned that this was like Miyamoto Karin last single. Juice Juice's single of this year was Pop Music and Sukite Itte Yo. Both of these are absolute bangers. I was playing them both on repeat. Who can resist pop 
music it's so fun I love the pom-poms the bum pom-poms and the dance and ski they they are both of them such good songs such catchy melodies and this is the juice juice I am here for it's going to be interesting to see how they go from now without having Karin but having Lei Chan instead my bias is Inaba Manaka. All I hope is that Manaka now get pushed into the center for her dancing, even if her vocals aren't that strong. Because Manaka is the cutest, and Manaka is precious, and Manaka is my favorite, and I am biased because she's my Oshi. As for other releases that are somewhat adjacent, we had Kanazawa Tomoko releasing Kiroi Sen no Uchigawa de. I think this song is so underrated. Not enough fuss was made about it. Why was it not on the single? This song is amazing. It's so catchy. It's so moody. Kanazawa's vocals are beautiful. It's like butter. I can't not sing along to it. Like everything about this song is just feels. I believe that at the time of the concert, she said there were other original songs that had yet to be released. And all I can do is beg Hello Project to release those. My brain and my ears just want to be caressed by her beautiful voice. I guess the other release that was just, just adjacent is Miyamoto Karin's solo single, Mirai no Firamen. This one, the weird thing about Karin's release was that it kind of just appeared out of nowhere and no one actually talked about it and it wasn't like announced on Hello Station or on Upcoming. At one point they put in a voice recording session of her and like that was it. And I kind of expected since she just graduated that they'd make a bit more fanfare and a bit more fa about her solo single since she was such a high profile member of Hello Project. I thought it was a kind of weird that it just appeared. The song itself is fine. It's a little bit boring. The main thing that I really like about it is the music video, the location more than anything of her being in that weird glass dome thing in the snow and the stars. I think that's probably my favorite thing about it, but the song itself doesn't stick in my mind whatsoever. It was a little bit lackluster for a first song. Then we have Kobushi Factory who disbanded this year. Their final single, Startline Seishun no Hana. Again, I was lucky enough to see the performed. And Seishun no Hana in particular is such a, like, it's just feelings. I can picture them still on stage and they were all wearing white and everyone was beautiful and Hamaura Ayano was like, so beautiful in person. Personally, I feel that Kobushi Factory was wildly mismanaged following the huge departure of three of the members and I think they should have been cared for more. They were kind of just like left at that point. They should have really been pushed. They should have been shown that even as five members they're good enough but instead they were kind of forgotten about for a while. They weren't anyone's priority and I think that's probably got a lot to do with why they ended up disbanding. I think it's a real shame because all five of them had amazing voices but with things how they are I just hope all of them are happy in their new pursuits. Next Tsubaki Factory who were the only other group to release two singles. First release was a double A side Ishiki Takae Otome no Jirema Takishimerarete Mitai. As with most of Tsubaki's songs they're about that kind of heartbroken girl. All of their songs have the sadness to them which of course these did as well. Ishiki Takae Otome no Jirema in particular. The main thing I recall about this song is actually the music video as well because it was so focused on circles like all the girls had some kind of circular object it went from circle to circles the song itself I don't really have any feelings about whereas Takishimerarete Mitai I like more because it was kind of winter and I have a special place in my heart for winter songs but the actual song itself isn't actually all that exciting particularly compared to Teon Yakedo I mean it's okay <laughs> there's not all that much to say about Tsubaki Factory's music because they do have a tendency of sounding quite samey. Their second release, Imananji Danshaizum. So Imananji sounds a lot like their previous music, but Danshaizum was kind of a fun departure. It's got more attitude than their usual songs and it's more fun. I think this release was kind of tainted after What's Her Face Twitter was found and she ended up leaving the group and they never addressed that fully and I kind of just left a bad taste in my mouth and I feel really sorry for her. I mean, if you think about idols as a concept, you're putting lots of pubescent teenage girls in the same place and there's nothing more prone to drama and catfighting 
than teenage girls. Of course they all have feelings about one another that they don't want to disclose and whether they write that down in a paper diary or they put it on a private Twitter account or a blog that isn't attached to them or that isn't being read by anyone else, I don't think it really makes a difference. And not to mention that I think a lot of these girls just use their private social media accounts as a way to blow off steam if they have a disagreement with one of the other members, think an, a decision made by management is unfair, then I think it's not fair to punish them so harshly simply for having posted something on a private Twitter account that wasn't being followed. Although I do understand that towards the other member they would be hurt knowing that one of their colleagues had essentially felt this certain way about them. I just think it's a shame and particularly how she just has to like disappear and yeah. I think it's a shame that we're gonna probably see more and more of this kind of thing because people don't use paper diaries. Like most most of us are glued to our phones so like of course our diary is gonna be on our phone and like so what if someone has a private Twitter or a private Instagram where they say stuff they don't really mean but at the time that they're posting it they feel like they kind of want to get it off their chest like what is the harm in that? Of course these girls are gonna like catfight and of course they sort of hate each other. Like that's what it's like. And knowing that it's old men who don't understand anything about the dynamics of teenage girls in groups that make the decisions on what happens to their careers just doesn't sit quite right with me. For Beyonds, they were just kind of like forgotten about this year. So much happened in 2019, like they had their amazing first single, they were pushed, they had their first album, they were everywhere and it was Beyonds this and Beyonds that and Beyonds theatre and Beyonds stage and then they just like forgot. <laughs> Hello Project has this terrible tendency to just like they get momentum going and then they just drop groups and they just completely forget. The momentum doesn't just keep going like they need to actually release stuff and Beyonds were just like they had the music video for that vitamin juice collaboration but like that's not a release that doesn't count. Anyway so in terms of what I think was the best release from Hello Project last year in 2020 I think my favorite has to be Kanazawa Tomoko Kiroi Sen no Uchigawa de I think it was such a left wing out of the blue like it caught everyone out of nowhere that she was having this solo concert and to have this amazing song and it's just so jazzy I don't know somehow it holds up no matter how many times I listen to it I don't get bored her voice just gets better and better I think this is by far the best song of the year 